Hey, it's Jim, and this is level three of the CFA program, a constructed response set on the topic of derivatives and risk management, and the learning module on currency management. We cover two learning objectives here. First one, appropriate currency management program. So remember that there are four ways to do this. We could avoid the risk, we could retain the risk, we could transfer the risk, and we could reduce the risk. So we're probably not going to just avoid this. Uh, so that's not really one of those choices. So somewhere in that uh, first learning objective, we'll have to probably transfer the risk and maybe reduce it. And then how about some strategies to reduce hedging costs? Um, of course, going back to level one and ethics and the professional standards, you know, somewhere in there it says, and I'm paraphrasing, it says something like, you know, you ought to perform your duties in the most efficient manage, uh, manner possible. So we're going to try to reduce hedging costs here. Those of you who have been watching my uh, recordings here will note that sometimes I put the questions first and sometimes I don't. And that's to accommodate those of you who really like to look at the questions first. If you don't like the questions, uh, if you don't like looking at the questions first, go ahead and close your ears for just a second here. All right, based on my just a short description of those learning objectives, you shouldn't be surprised to see some of these questions here. Which hedging instrument should we use? Notice we're going to have to choose between static and dynamic. Remember that static means that we execute the hedge today and then we just wait until the very end. The problem with that is that, you know, the, the value of the underlying asset could go way up or way down and we're locked into that forward or futures price. Of course, the good thing that we like about the static hedging is that it doesn't cost very much. So static and dynamic, we'll have to make a choice between those and then forward and futures contracts will probably have to make a choice between uh, all the stuff that's required on those futures exchanges, things like uh, initial margin and variation margin and marking to market and collateral, all that kind of stuff. So once again, it's just going to be a trade-off. Question two, how do we rebalance a hedge? And we're going to have to calculate something there. That should be relatively straightforward. Uh, question three, recommend an option strategy to meet the objectives. Question four, what about forward points? Ah, do, does, does the forward contract sell at a premium or a discount? And I'm hoping those of you who went through this extremely long learning module will remember that there was a term in there and it was mentioned probably not a thousand times, but uh, surely uh, a lot of times. So we'll mention that term here in answering question four. All right, let's get right to the case description. So Elena, investment manager based in Germany, her client seeks assistance, globally diversified investment portfolio denominated in U.S. dollars. Uh, Schmidt's reporting currency is the euro, but he's worried about U.S. dollar exposure. Policy statement says quarterly rebalancing. There's the total value of the portfolio. Let's see. Schmidt has moderate risk aversion evaluates a quarterly hedge using three month forward or three month futures contract. So there, there was that first question. Elena also manages uh, another fund in some other country. It is denominated there 75 million great British pounds. There's the spot rate and the value of the fund has decreased by 5 million. Oh, so let's go back up to the top. What are we doing? We have this current hedge but the value of the portfolio has fallen. So the question then becomes, what did I say earlier? As a part of our responsibility, we shouldn't be wasting the, uh, the client's capital. So we have a hedge of 75, but it's decreased by five. What, what do we do about that? I mean, one of the things we could do is just ignore it, but that's probably not a good answer. We also have a Swiss franc hedge. Uh, we want to reduce those hedging costs. She believes limited upside for that cross rate. Uh, currently hedged with forward contracts. Uh, policy changes by the Danish Central Bank. All right, so here we need to go all the way back to level one and remind ourselves of, you know, what happens with, uh, with monetary policy. How does that impact 
interest rates? How does it impact exchange rates? So we're told here that the uh, forward exchange rate has moved to a premium. Now, if you were paying attention to what I said a minute ago and you went back to that term, boy, the learning module tells us all about what happens when we have a forward premium and we and what happens when we have a forward discount. So I'm guessing you probably know the answer to that. All right, so here are the questions again. Let's move on to that first one. What are we supposed to do? We have to make a choice between static and dynamic and forward and futures. So I'm guessing based on what we talked about inside of that, uh, of that case description and Thomas Schmidt, we're probably going to pick the dynamic hedge. A uh, couple of reasons there. Remember that the policy statement says something like, hey, we need to make sure we keep track of this every three months. And Morales wants to hedge this quarterly. So a three month quarterly hedge, you can only do that with a dynamic hedge that's uh, consistent with the policy statement. Remember, the Institute, they love linking stuff in the policy statement with, you know, changes that arise either at the macro level or at the micro level. All right, so those first two bullet points there, that just is a, a formal justification of what I've been talking about. Yeah, regular adjustments to the hedge, uh, static hedge may avoid frequent transaction costs. This is what I was saying earlier, you know, it's fairly expensive to do that, but uh, it risks accumulating unwanted currency exposures. That's why I was putting my hand up like that, putting my hand down like that. Now, what are we going to select between the forward contract and the futures contract. A uh, couple of things here that I already said, if we use the futures market, we have to worry about all those margin requirements and collateral. And so look what we have in bolded, less administratively burdens, burdensome. But the remember that in the futures market, that um, especially on the organized exchanges, those people, they tell you what you can do. They say, hey, look, here's standard contract size. Here's the uh, standard maturity date. And you got to do the margin. You got to worry about collateral. You have to play by our rules in order to trade on our exchange. So that's why forward contracts, which trade in the over the counter market, they can be tailored or customized which means, uh, which means greater flexibility. And then that last point here, uh, I think is a really interesting one. Um, you know, of course the futures exchanges, I mean, they have lots of liquidity, but they don't have lots of liquidity for billions of dollars uh, in exposure. So those forward contracts, they can be, they can be more liquid for large trades. So what are we doing? We're going to pick the dynamic forward contract. Question two, what are we worried about the, this, uh, this fund and that's denominated in another currency? And what has happened is that we need to rebalance. And so here's the concept of this over hedging. And so here, just let me go back here real quickly just to rem remind ourselves, where were we? 75 million. Now it's down to 5 million. So we have this concept of over hedging. And by the way, if you take a look at the learning module, this is a super easy uh, section uh, to understand. Yeah. So look what we have in bold to reduce the costs of over hedging. And then the math of this is pretty straightforward. We're over hedged by the 5 million British pounds. We're given that exchange rate of 8.54. So remember, gosh, at the risk of offending you, you, know, you always take the amount, in this case, the 5 million British pounds, and you're either going to multiply or divide by the exchange rate. And so notice what I did for convenience sake here. I put the, uh, we put the great British pounds in bolded red. So just imagine drawing a line between each one of those. They cancel. So we multiply. We have British pounds in the numerator, then British pounds in the denominator of the exchange rate. They cancel and we're left with, well, whatever the math turns out to be. Now, what are we going to do about this other fund uh, managing that fund's exposure and a um, couple of choices that we have? 
If you remember from the learning module, we can invest in a protective put, we can do a put spread, we can do some exotic options, we can do a seagull spread, but what we're gonna do here is we're gonna do this collar. And the Institute calls this a short risk reversal. So remember, uh, all the way back in level one, we did things like collars and spreads. Don't get this confused with a spread. Remember, the picture of a spread goes like this. You know, it's horizontal line, and then it goes up, and then another horizontal line, and you can reverse that, depending on whether you're bearish or bullish. But this collar, we're going to use calls and puts, but we're going to use a put option. We're going to buy a put option and we're going to go ahead and write the call option. So the picture of this is similar to similar to the spread, but we're going to have this diagonal line and then the horizontal line and then another di di uh, diagonal line all the way up. So there we go. It maintains that profit potential. Just remember, think about all those graphs that you learned back in level one. What it does is it reduces those hedging costs because you receive the premium for selling that option and then you use that to pay for the other option. And remember that it's, there's a possibility, depending on what uh, timing and what exercise prices that you use, that you could come up with this um, you could come up with this zero cost collar. Now we're just gonna, the Institute just calls it a short risk reversal because um, we're probably not, I mean, we might be able to, we're probably not gonna be able to arrange it so that it's a zero cost collar. And then our, uh, our final question was related to this hedging strategy for that Euro exposure because um, the, difference between the spot rate and the forward rate has changed. <clears throat> so what's happened is that we've moved to a forward premium. This means that you can do something. This means that you can maybe buy the base currency at one rate and then sell it at some other rate. And of course, that term that I was talking to you about earlier, that's the roll yield. For those of you who don't remember this, go back and look at uh, look at the learning module and just, you know, you guys have this uh, on, on your computer. So just type in just type in roll yield and do a search inside of this learning module and you'll get roll yield. And there'll be a thousand of them in there. And so, of course, once we have that forward premium, we have a positive roll yield. And remember that the Institute calls that rule yield, the cost of the hedge. So what do we want to do? We want to reduce the cost of the hedge. We move to a premium and therefore that reduces our costs. Now, what did I say just a few moments ago? This is a super long learning module. So in this case study, you know, we've covered just a small part of it. So I want you to go to the end of the learning module. There are 35 or 36 questions in there. And so you really need to do some extra work. Remember now, you guys listen to me and uh, uh, there are some learning modules in which our cases cover a majority of the topics inside of that learning module. This is not one of them. So you need to make sure you go and broaden, make sure you get the breadth and make sure you get the depth of this. Um, anyway, hey, thanks for watching. <laughs> Have a great day and good luck studying.